My name's Michael Cullen. I'm a professor of medical sociology in the School for Social Policy, Sociology and Social Research here at the University of Kent. One of the areas of interest that I've been working on for some time now is looking at trust, uh, trust relations in the context of uh, healthcare. Sociologists have looked at trust uh, for a long time now, coming from different theoretical perspectives, and a number of them have highlighted how crucial trust is, uh, both at the macro level in terms of creating social cohesion in society, and at the more micro level uh, in terms of creating cohesion uh, in relationships between people. Trust is particularly important in the context of uncertainty. And one particular and perhaps unique characteristic of healthcare is that it's characterized by uncertainty, unpredictability, and increasing complexity. Therefore, trust is a kind of useful strategy or device for managing that uncertainty or bridging that un uncertainty. Trust has uh, two different elements which are interrelated. One is uh, competence trust. And in, from the patient's point of view, in the context of healthcare, it's whether uh, your doctor is competent to do a good job. The second element is intentional trust, about motives. Is your clinician working with your interests at heart? or is it working, or is the doctor, he or she, working in the interest of the organization? Or if in the context of, say, a private healthcare system, is it working, is the doctor working to actually enhance their income? So trust is quite important. When we think about the doctor, when we think about trusting relations, we tend to think about patients trusting clinicians or doctors. But it's more than that because it's not only doctors trusting patients, do they trust our testimony? Do they trust us to take our medication? Do they trust our narrative or story? But we're also interested in trust relations in organizations, trust relations between managers and clinicians. And this is important because poor trusting relations between managers and clinicians can actually have a knock-on effect for the quality of patient care that clinicians can be providing. So if they're dissatisfied with their working environment, that may affect the type of care that you and I as patients receive. So we're from the patient's point of view or the public's point of view, there's also institutional trust. Do we trust in the institution of medicine, the medical profession? Do we trust in this country, in England? Do we trust the NHS? So we're interested in public trust in these institutions and there's the thorny issue of the relationship between institutional trust and interpersonal trust. And, uh, that is an issue that actually has raised, is a contested explanation for that. Now, does trust matter? Does trust matter for patients, clini clinicians and managers? Well, from a theoretical point of view, there's lots of arguments why trust is important, but there is empirical evidence from research, at least in the healthcare system, that trust is particularly important for patients. It's a marker of quality uh, in terms of their assessment of the quality of care that they can receive. It actually influences their choice. Great emphasis in the NHS on choice and trust is quite important in actually influencing how patients may make decisions, if they can, about the type of care and the type of clinician that they're going to consult. It's also important in the context of patients 
a trusting relations, they're more likely to consult their clinician, they're more likely to disclose information to their clinician, and they're more likely to adhere to the advice of the clinician. So there's evidence of that. The evidence about whether um, having a trusting relationship actually has a long-term effect on health status, the jury's out on that. There aren't many uh, experimental studies that really have explored that in any detail, so it's, diff it's difficult to know. But one would assume that there's the indirect effect of the impact of uh, taking medication. We also need to think about, well, trust is important, but there's what we call a dark side to trust. And this is associated with blind trust. Blind trust can lead to the abuse of power through exploitation or domination. And it, in these, what we obviously, it's important to have relatively high trust cultures, but that can actually exploit the lack of vigilance and assessment of performance. Cozy relationships may stifle innovation and foster current practice. So there are some hazards or dangers or risks of um, trusty relations. So we need to actually think about trust might be important, but what sort of trusting relations do we want? And there's evidence that in fact trusting relations are changing for all sorts of reasons. The rise of the so-called consumer in the healthcare, much more enlightened patient, much more informed, uh, greater regulation and monitoring, uh, marketization, the introduction of market principles, even in a public, publicly financed health, health system like the NHS in England. Um, there's some say a decline in the status and cultural authority of professionals in general, experts in general, and also there's a whole range, at least in the early part of this century, negative portrayals of uh, doctors which are fueled by the media. So there is kind of drivers for change and there's some evidence that there is um, changes in trust relations between patients and doctors. Uh, we no longer are looking for blind trust. We attend, as patients, tend to adopt a more critical trust. We're looking for uh, adopt a more conditional trust. We are expecting doctors to earn our trust and we're not actually um, content to accept a kind of blind uh, and dependent relation that we may have, have done in the past. There's also some Trust relations also vary by context. Um, and in terms of the changes in nature of trust relations, if you look at survey data, you'll find that actually clinicians are right up there in terms of high trust relations. So in a sense that if you could actually say there's been a decline in trust, well, the difficult to find strong evidence to say that decline in trust in medicine. Maybe at medical institution there has been, but on an individual level, doctors are still, there are relatively high levels of trust, at least compared, compared with other professionals and occupations. But what's happening is that there might not have been a decline in trust, but trust relations may have changed. We also should consider the different organisation and clinical and cultural settings. And I want to highlight two different elements here. We've done some work on mental health. Now, mental health setting for all sorts of reasons, uh, particularly to do with both competence and intentional trust, there's low levels of, it's a culture of low trust in that context, not least because of the negative stereotypes and the stigma associated with, still associated particularly with psychotic illnesses. Yet trusting relations in the context of mental health are 
crucial, particularly for talk therapy, where uh, it's important for both players in the therapy to trust each other if that therapeutic intervention is to have some impact. But we found lots of, ex well, uh, a, a number of examples where trust is important, but we also found examples where despite a lack of trusting relations, particularly on the side of the patient, there was still some reciprocal relationship between the clinician and the patient. For example, in one particular case, although the patient rejected the psychotic diagnostic label given by the clinician, they were still willing to take the prescribed medicine for, but they used it to manage what they considered was an anxiety disorder. So from both sides, from the clinician's point of view and the patient's side, they were both happy with the outcome of that consultation. From the patient's point of view, they were taking the drug but rejected the diagnosis. From the clinician's point of view, the patient was taking the prescribed drug. But what was interesting in this context was the emphasis in this particular area of individual responsibility. So in terms of trusting relations, there are areas where trusting relationships are contested. There are lower levels of trust. Uh, but even in those contexts, the lack of trust, there can be effective reciprocal relations. Now, I've talked about high income countries, health, health systems in the global north. But what about health systems in low to middle income countries where the infrastructure is not as strong as it is in uh, uh, high income countries, at least in the health system. We've done some research in India, some exploratory research. India's got a public, it's a pluralistic system. And what we mean by that is a mixture of public and private, much bigger private system. In the context of India, the, uh, we found some evidence that there was uh, very poor trusting relations between uh, both regulators and doctors. They didn't trust each other. They both thought that they were, uh, they doubted their trust from an intent point of view. Uh, and there were claims of irregular practices, unethical practices, and money changing hands uh, for all sorts of different reasons. The most interesting point about is from the patient's point of view, were very aware of this. They didn't necessarily condone it, but they accepted that it is the way it was or is. And as long as their doctor was competent, they fully accepted that these other practices were uh, just part of the way the system operated. So in that particular context, different from um, high income countries, there may have been a lack of trust within the system, but uh, patients were accepting of that in that cultural context. So finally, uh, what about the evidence of when trust is lost about building trust? Well, there are lots of policies and strategies that have been put forward, better communication, greater transparency, better accountability. A whole range of policies have been suggested, but the jury's out in terms of evidence of effectiveness. So there needs to be uh, a lot more substantive research exploring the feasibility and effectiveness of these different types of policies. So thank you for listening.